Hey everybody, it's Aaron Norris with the Norris Group. It is Friday, June 1st. Welcome to summer. And what are the things you need to know as a real estate investor or realtor about artificial intelligence in the space? That and much more as we cover the biggest headlines in real estate. Don't miss the radio show on the podcast this week. We've got Paul Herrera. He is the governmental affairs uh, person for the Inland Valley Association of Realtors. And man, there is so much regulation and legislation coming down the pipeline and that we're all going to have to vote on. Please stay informed and make sure you call your legislators. Real estate investors, we're leaning a lot on the realtors right now. They're the ones advocating for us in Sacramento. So you're going to want to pay attention because a lot of the stuff coming down the pipeline is not investor friendly. So make sure to tune in this weekend. According to Zillow, the number of homeowners underwater on their mortgages is less than 10%. The National Association of Realtors reported a 1.3% decrease in pending home sales, putting them now at 106.4, and that's down from 107.8. And mortgage rates increased slightly this week, with 30-year rates at 4.56% and 15-year rates at 4.06%. SB 1069 last year gave California homeowners the flexibility to build accessory dwelling units and even turn some illegal spaces that they've been using secretly on the side into legal spaces with some caveats. California may be on to something uh, because they've got to meet their affordable housing numbers, the growing crisis with housing in general, and the problem that homeowners in California tend to not like new construction in their own backyard compared to renters, and homeowners make up the bulk of voters. Accessory dwelling units or granny flats can provide rental income, space for relatives or caregivers, or even more manageable places for people to retire, and then they can rent out the front house, which is really great and a creative way to solve the housing crunch at the moment. The number of accessory dwelling unit permits, or ADUs, in California shot up 63% to 4,352 compared to the year before, says uh, Adam Data Solutions. House flippers are paying close attention and thinking about those, especially in some of the more expensive areas with large lots. Got to check that out. It might be a fantastic way to explode value and make a little bit of extra money because getting inventory is oh so tight. Seems like the last few years are full of clickbait articles using the word hack. Everything from cooking hacks to life hacks. Everybody loves a good hack, right? Well, Realtor.com joins the party with painting hacks this week. Always relevant in the real estate space if you're a realtor helping a client get through the process of fixing up the home or real estate investor pushing a little bit more on the sweat equity side but some of my favorite hacks they list using rubber bands to prevent drips using plastic bags as tray liners always really good using vanilla in the paint to make it smell a little bit less awful using aluminum foil and petroleum jelly to, uh, to protect surfaces which i had not thought about and making accurate lines with putty knives. I am horrible at painting, so I definitely need to be listening to some of these hacks. We've been reporting for a few months now on the net loss of migration here in California. You may be surprised where they're going, or not going for that matter. Las Vegas ranked as the most popular destination for people moving from the cities along the California coast to non-California metropolitan areas, according to a new report from Trulia. Las Vegas represents a, a logical choice for California since it's sort of close and the weather is warm, but the, the median price in Vegas is $260,000 compared to $720,000 along the coastal areas, especially like places in San Francisco and Los Angeles where the prices are just nutty. In total, more than 8% of people who moved out of California in the first quarter of 2017 chose Nevada's most populous city as their new home. We will definitely have to see how that changes in the next year or two, especially in light of the Trump tax changes. Adam Data Solutions ranked the 19 U.S. finalists for Amazon's second headquarters, also known as HQ2, based on seven factors impacting housing market health and quality of life for prospective home buyers and home owners. The seven factors analyzed in the rankings were medium uh, home price, five-year home appreciation, affordability, average school test scores, crime rate, property tax rate, and environmental hazard risk. Each of the 19 geographies were ranked with all these kept in mind. So who scored the highest? Ta-da, Raleigh, North Carolina. Who would have thought? In case you care, Los Angeles came in seventh, and Amazon says a decision on HQ2 is coming this year. Predicting intent in real estate using artificial intelligence seems far-fetched, right? Well, that's exactly what Likely.ai, an artificial intelligence platform, and Adam Data are teaming up to do. They built a, a platform by aggregating data, including public records from Adam, on 155 million properties nationwide and a 225 million record demographic set that provides information on buying trends and behavioral trends. They will have accumulated a macro market and micro market data set that is 
proprietary uh, made up of both local and national influence signals. So here's what gets interesting and a little bit of a concern, especially if you're a realtor or a real estate investor, you have to understand what's about to happen. And there's a few different players you're going to have to keep in mind. Amazon, I think, is the one to beat. And as soon as they decide to put their name in the real estate hat, we should all be worried because they've got information that nobody else has. They've got 10 years of buying signals. So people, and we've seen it in play. Target was one of them. Back in 2012, they started sending our ads to a female who was under the age of 18 who started to get pregnancy ads. Dad got mad, called and yelled at Target only to find out his daughter was truly pregnant. So this is nothing new, but buying habits can signal what we're going to be doing in the future. The other uh, thing to keep in mind is Zillow. Zillow owns, of course, Trulia, two of the biggest properties in real estate right now. I bet you anything they have a lot of clues and signals before somebody even decides to list. They have all that data locked up and a huge amount of mobile user data. We use Google to search. A lot of consumers use Zillow to get that Zestimate to find out what their property is worth. And Zillow has that information and now they are buying houses and realtors or the top 10 to 15 percent of realtors use them for advertising so they're going to be able to sell leads before any of the rest of us know what the heck is going on realtor.com i don't know where they're at and what they're going to be doing but i'm hoping that they're, they're going to start stepping up their ai game i would love to hear what you have to think if you're on youtube please leave a comment below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a beat if you're on facebook please don't forget to not only like the norris group page but don't forget to add us to your C first list and with notifications on. Leave your comments below the video. And if we miss something, share the story on our comment sections on either YouTube or Facebook, and we'll make sure to include it on our blog at thenorrisgroup.com forward slash blog. We would love to see you out and about as we talk throughout California for the month of June. Uh, June 7th, we're going to be speaking three different times. Uh, depending on where you're at, we're going to be all over the place. June 7th, Bruce will be doing the Appraisal Institute's 21st Annual Inland Empire Market Trends. Anybody's available to attend that, but it's a full day uh, event. June 7th, I am also going to be in Temecula teaching at SRCAR's uh, annual meeting, and it's for their members only. So if you're part of uh, SRCAR, come check me out. I'll be doing technology trends and their effects on real estate. And that evening, June 7th, Bruce will be going from the Inland Empire all the way out to San Diego for Stay Put or Cash Out at the San Diego Investment Club. June 19th, uh, definitely make sure you register for NSDREI's 14th anniversary dinner. Dad and I will be sitting on a panel and Eric Saragusa will be beating us up with a lot of really smart questions. He always does and I am looking forward to that. And our one event for July, July 14th, Think Realty uh, is having a conference in Irvine. You won't want to miss that. Check out our, all of our events on our website at thenorrisgroup.com and that's also where you're going to find out information about our Florida and California hard money loans. So whether you're fixer flipping, buying and holding, or constructing new houses, we can help you out. And even if you're thinking about 1031 exchange changing from California, Florida, we can help you do that too. I have personally, and it's awesome. So for more information for those, check out thenorrisgroup.com, or if you want more information on passive investing with mortgages and trustees, check out tngtrustees.com. With that, have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week.